with Dragon. <clears throat> Short one. It's Wednesday, so we're gonna do another topic of the day, topic of the day video. And for today, I don't normally get these comments anymore, but I remember last year and I remember years ago when I was posting about herniated disc and I was, you know, back in the gym. So always you get these comments post-injury and you're kind of in that, you're in phase one to phase two where you're transitioning out of a lot of mobility and body weight based movements into maybe a more of a progressive overload type of setting in the gym that these comments arise on the YouTube channel where you'll get like a bunch of like, oh, you're gonna make things worse. Oh, you're gonna get hurt again. You're gonna make things way worse by going to the gym. It's like, I hope by now with all the content that's on YouTube and using this channel as a guideline, I, I've literally documented my progress from last year till now going into hypertrophy settings, you know, across, you know, a very, you know, various different ways, whether it's push, pull legs, full body splits, everything is pretty much not necessarily documented in terms of the training, but my speaking on these topics hopefully has offered a lot of clarification on terms of like, is the gym bad and when to enter the gym post herniated disc? I think I've hopefully cleared up some of the um, inconsistencies there, but we're going to talk about that that mindset, that mentality that the gym does not coincide with getting better progressively and then healing your lower backs and also making you stronger as an end result and using that injury as a catalyst to be better than you ever were before rather than uh, a detriment, a hit, you know, something that is, you know, all, oh, you know, you hear like the, the uh, old school thing with like, Hurt my shoulder, but I used to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. I had this injury. Now I can't play the same anymore. I've always hated that ideology, that mindset. And maybe that was kind of ushered into my life at an early age by playing sports. Uh, I think, you know, I was really quick in college. And once I blew up my knee, people always said, you're never going to be as fast again. You're never going to be as quick. It's like I always couldn't stand that type of ideology because it starts to like permeate into your brain and then if you always think that you're never gonna be better than you were before then you're gonna manifest that unfortunately into everything that you do so i think having this this ideology this mindset of you're gonna be better than you were previously and then seeing that output you know in terms of statistical numbers it's really nice to see and i've kind of experienced that in my late 20s um sorry early 20s into my late 20s and now my early 30s so case in point is when, you know, if you're a previous lifter or you're an avid lifter, you want to get back to the gym, or maybe you're new to the gym, just haven't started training, but you did hurt your back. Like, what is your entry point? How do you go about this? Like, I would say it's going to kind of be over a continuum type of situation here. Whereas if you're a new person, you're going into a gym training session, you've already got a compromised back. Is it the best to start, you know, hammering away to the program or just going into the gym willy nilly without a program? that's probably not the best thing for you. Obviously working with a coach, working with somebody in person is gonna make sure that you per perfect these exercise patterns and then the biomechanics for you as like the individual, which is different for me as like a six foot one guy versus you maybe as a five foot six female, it's gonna be totally different. Squat movements, hinge patterns, all that stuff. So having somebody there in person, obviously watching you do these things safely, you can then continue to level up over time. Now, if you're somebody that has been in the gym in the past, did hurt the herniated disc or whether it was weight related training, whether it was not, you know, outside extracurricular stuff, it gives you the opportunity to have perfect exercise, not only selection, but attention to detail within the moment. So that way you can never, ever have that same situation happen again. Case in point was in my early twenties. I was obsessed with squats because I thought that translated, maybe it was also strength related. I was obsessed with high performing, you know, high level, high weight, like powerlifting style squats. Um, only later did I figure out like, it's good, but you know, it didn't really translate to leg size. I wanted big legs, obviously bodybuilding, which I kind of fell in love with later, but, um, case of my squat was shit. That's what I'm trying to say. I was only going after high weight. How much can I squat? How much can I squat? Didn't care how much my back rounded or, you know, how crazy extension I was going or how much, you know, like the bar was <laughs> like basically all only located centrally over like my glutes. The point is you might think that you have perfect exercise execution, but the reality is it might be dog shit. And 
you know, if you don't film these things or said you don't work with a coach or you don't like micromanage these things, I see it every day, right? You would think that if you've been doing something for years, you would be excellent at it, but you could just be doing movement patterns wrong incorrectly for years. And then that gets programmed in, your body mechanics kind of take over and then it's just, it's like a routinized pattern in your brain of doing something incorrectly, which then correlates to issues where people are saying like they're getting consistent back pain or shoulder pain or knee pain when they do this, leg extension, so on and so forth. So what I want to kind of boil this back down into is the gym is not your enemy, okay? There are no bad exercises, but people doing said exercises are not innately good or bad, if that makes sense, right? Anything can be good and beneficial, but anything can also be bad and detrimental. It has to be perfected over the course, almost like ad nauseum, same movement patterns at almost particularly no weight possible. So when I was relearning how to squat, how to hinge properly, <clears throat> I thought my movement patterns were pretty good. My squat pattern specifically needed to improve because it wasn't translating at all into leg, serious leg mass. So it didn't matter how much I was, you know, squatting or how much I was single leg, leg pressing. It didn't really translate to size over time into my quads. But then when I started really focusing in on like knees over toes, squeezing the quad, getting that burn, going for more reps, you know, staying out of the 10 to 12s, going to the 15 to 20 rep ranges. That's when I really started to tax the muscle entirely. And I was using a quarter of the weights to get there. Hmm. So a lot to take in for you as the person listening to this. But ultimately, when you're devising a strategy for yourself, if you have core human movement patterns built into your, you know, caked into your program, do you necessarily need to add weight to those movements initially? Probably not. You're probably going to get getting a really decent stimulus week over week, especially if you're coming out of a back injury, okay? Or just any injury in general. And then over time, the good thing about, you know, whether it's kettlebells, dumbbells, or just traditional uh, machines that you see in the gym is they're very safe. They take away the stability portion of a lot of these movements, which allows you to really contract those different muscle groups and keep you safe and hopefully with a neutral spine as you do those movements. Now, I'm not gonna argue that Dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells are more effective for, and cables are more effective for healing a herniated disc. I think my personal opinion is you've got this huge toolkit. Why are we being so selective? Why do we need to be so specific in saying I only need to do dumbbells? I only need to do kettlebells. Or I saw this online, like this is a functional movement pattern. He only uses cables. Use all these tools at your disposal to become the best, strongest version of yourself. And I kind of apply that same concept to nutrition, sleep, you know, not going too extreme in terms of like, I have to hit 300 grams of protein. When you go into the extremes of things, it tends to have an extreme result, both positive or negative. I'd rather have somebody be consistent over time of a very long continuum than be, you know, a drone robot for four months and then after four months they implode and now they're way worse than they were before, both from like a habit standpoint and also from a nutritional standpoint and so on and so forth. So if you can find that nice little middle path for yourself, you're going to see progressive gains over time, progressive gains downwards in terms of total pain, you know, not only just gains, but pain as well. So like I said, I don't get these comments anymore because people tend to see like the proof is in the pudding, right? I'm not injured, injured. I think everybody is probably really close to a certain something, right? It's just it, you know, kind of luck of the draw on some things, but I'm not in a position where I can't train with 100% intensity, both in pull, push, carry, any movements that you could think of. I'm in a good position. That's why I'm able to acquire muscle tissue. And I'm in a surplus that's translating to new muscle tissue acquired. And I think my movement patterns, because they had to get restored to its very base level functionality, has now allowed me to progress them. And, and in turn, I'm using less weight and gaining more muscle tissue. And also my joints are thanking me for it as well. So that is the topic for today. If you're on the fence about strength training to heal a herniated disc or just any injury in general, think about it. All of these other financial investments in terms of passive therapies, chiropractor, dry needling, 
going to the doctor. Everything costs money. Invest in something that has basically been laid out in front of you where you only need to tick those, tick those boxes and over time you see progressive benefit out of those things. And if you need help, obviously reach out to the dragon because he can help you get you to the next level. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put it on the YouTube. I will reply, dragon out.